Playing Ironsworn can appear a bit daunting at first glance, especially if you're tackling it solo, but I can assure you it's actually pretty straightforward. Now, I'm going to walk you through the basics here, and I'll be using examples from Ironsworn Starforged, but the principles apply to the original Ironsworn too. The character you play in Ironsworn is represented by a very basic stat line. The five stats are Edge, which is your character's agility, quickness, and is used for ranged combat, Heart, which is your courage, sociability, and charisma. Iron, which is toughness, physical strength, and used for fighting up close. Shadow, which is stealth, cunning, and deception. And wits, which is expertise, knowledge, and powers of observation. Stats are assigned a value between one and three. You will only have a solitary three to allocate, so choose wisely as this will be your strongest stat. Then you'll have two stats set at two, and the remaining stats at one. In addition, your character will be rounded out with assets. Assets are broken into categories which represent companions, upgrades, or resources. But here we'll be looking at the assets known as paths, which represent your skills and training. Starting out, you will pick two paths, which you can mix and match to make a wide variety of interesting characters. There are no classes in Ironsworn, but combining these two paths will give your character a unique suite of abilities that can be further unlocked and upgraded. Actually playing Ironsworn is simple. You envision the fiction and role play what your character is doing. When you face a situation in the narrative where the outcome is uncertain, this will trigger a move. A move is a mechanic that resolves this uncertainty using dice. You roll the dice, determine the result, apply it to the fiction, which you then continue to role play. Let's have a look at the move, Gather Information. We make this move whenever a character searches for clues, asks questions, analyzes evidence, or does research. That is the move's trigger. Whenever the trigger occurs in the fiction, we roll some dice and add the relevant stat. In the case of gather information, it is asking us to roll plus wits. So here are our dice. The red d6 is the action dice. This is what we're going to roll and add our stat to. The result on the dice plus our stat gives us an action score. These black d10s are the challenge dice. Each time we make a move, we roll all three dice together. The goal is for our action score to exceed the values on each of the challenge dice. Let's make a move and roll some dice. Here, we have rolled a 5, and with our wits of 3, that gives us an action score of 8. This beats both challenge dice and gives us a strong hit. It's the best possible result and gives us the best possible outcome. We apply the result of the strong hit listed here on the move, to the fiction, and then carry on playing. In this example, we have rolled a 3, which with our wits gives us an action score of 6, which only beats one of the challenge dice. This is called a weak hit, a success, but with complications. Again, we apply the result of the weak hit to the fiction and keep playing. When you don't beat either of the challenge dice, it's called a miss. This is bad. You apply the result to the fiction as instructed, then in most cases make another move called pay the price. Paying the price usually applies an additional mechanical penalty or adds a narrative complication, which then drives the story forward. Should you ever roll a double on the challenge dice, this is called a match. A match on a strong hit gives you an extra narrative boost or advantage, whilst rolling a match on a miss means you're going to suffer an additional complication. Whilst playing the game, Rolling hits, plus some other effects provided by assets, will build up your momentum. Momentum is a powerful resource that you can build and then later burn to replace your action score with your current momentum value. In this example, by burning our momentum of 7, we can turn this miss into a weak hit. This can really bail you out of some sticky situations, but be careful about when you choose to do this, because after you burn your momentum, it resets and you have to build it up all over again. Your health, mental health, and resources are measured on these tracks. And yes, you are seeing that correctly. You only ever have five hit points. This makes your character very killable. So you have to be careful how you approach dangerous situations, as there's a lot of things in Ironsworn that can put an end to your adventure real quick. Suffice to say, any of these tracks dropping to zero is bad news. Lastly, let's talk about progress tracks. These are how the game charts our progress and they can represent anything. A journey is represented by a track, a fight or even a relationship is represented by a track. 
you most likely will have several of these running at the same time, in addition to a background bow, which is the quest that drives your character through the story. These progress tracks start empty, and we fill in the boxes whenever a specific move instructs us to mark progress. Each track has a rank that determines how hard it is to complete. The easiest rank is Troublesome, where you fill in three full boxes each time you mark progress. If the rank is Formidable, you fill in just one box each time you mark progress. The hardest rank is Epic, where you only mark one tick each time you make progress. Your character's background vow will be Epic, so it will take a long, long time to complete. And it's also worth noting that even when you fill in all 10 boxes, that doesn't mean that whatever you're doing is complete. You have to roll for it. But instead of rolling action dice, you roll the challenge dice and compare it against the progress that you've made. So you can try and fill in all 10 boxes and try and make that success a bit more certain. Or you can risk it by rolling with, say, 6 or 7 boxes filled. And this could bring things to a sudden and spectacularly heroic conclusion, but could also go horribly wrong and undo all the hard work you've done to reach this point. If you want to see this system in action, well, why not check out my Starforged campaign? You can jump in at episode 1 if you like, or you can check out my session 0 and see how I built the world and the characters that inhabit it. I hope this has been helpful to anyone wanting an overview of how the game works. There's obviously a lot more to it, but these are the basics. Have you got any questions about the system? Leave them in the comments below and make sure to like this video, subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to follow the campaign or see any more of my Iron Swarm content. Until next time, it's farewell and safe passage.